Hello, my name is Barbara Bromberger. I'm the co-founder and together with Marston Christoph, I'm the co-director of Foundation Conservation Carpathia. I'm very pleased to be here uh, this evening, at least virtually, and would like you to introduce you a little bit into the work that we are doing in the Romanian Carpathians. So Foundation Conservation Carpathia is a Romanian-based foundation with over 120 really passionate people. Um, founded about 13 years ago uh, with one very specific goal, which is the creation of a large European wilderness area, hopefully with the status of a national park, that will benefit both nature and people alike. So why the Carpathians? Well, the Carpathian Mountains are still the wildest mountain range in Europe. Here we find the last unfragmented forests of the continent, with more large carnivores than anywhere else in Europe, and also some of the last primary forests of Europe. Only a decade ago, Romania was probably still home to about 65% of the EU's virgin forests. This unfortunately is changing. After the fall of communism and following the land restitution to the former owners that started in 2005, thousands of hectares have been clear cut. In the past two decades, human pressure on these mountains has increased dramatically and led to a very intensive exploitation of these forests, even inside existing national parks and protected areas. So at that time, it seemed the only way of stopping illegal logging and halting the loss of old growth forests was by purchasing it and putting these forests under private protection. So with the help of some very generous philanthropists, we purchased the first parcels of forest inside an existing small national park in 2007. But we soon realized that in order to have a real conservation impact, we needed to think much bigger, much more on the landscape level. So now we are looking at a project area of about 300,000 hectares, including Romania's largest um, mountain range, the Fagaraj Mountains. And that alone is an area of 2,000 square kilometers without human settlements. And 75% of this area is still covered by very productive spruce and deciduous forests. So together with a partner organization, we have managed so far to purchase almost 27,000 hectares of forests and alpine grasslands for full protection in perpetuity, an area that could become the core area of a future national park. But we not only purchase intact forests, but also clear cuts and other degraded land. And we started to restore the original habitats. So throughout the past 10 years, our foundation has replanted um, over 1,000 hectares of clear felt areas with more than 3 million saplings. And for this, we even established our own tree nurseries so we can actually produce those species that we need to replant these areas to really get to the natural tree composition. Now, in order to manage and to protect also the wildlife on this land, our foundation had to establish its own hunting association so we could actually lease the hunting concessions. Like that, we are now protecting wildlife on almost 80,000 hectares. That means all sport and trophy hunting has been stopped and we are focusing only on the mitigation of wildlife human conflicts around the villages. That means, we are employing a rapid intervention team. We are breeding livestock guarding dogs. We're distributing electric fences and we're giving financial and in-kind compensation in case of damage. We also employ an anti-poaching team and we already can see that wildlife numbers are recovering. Equally important, we're also bringing back some of the keystone species that have been gone from these mountains for centuries. One is the European bison, which was gone for more than 200 years before we released the first herd into the wild in 2020. And another two groups are already roaming these mountains and we are already having the first calves born in the wild from this year. I have to say it's a real highlight for us to see the comeback of these really magnificent animals and to watch them again exploring the landscape and to learn how they are going to shape this ecosystem. Another landscape architect we are bringing back is the beaver, which has been reintroduced to Romania in the late 90s, but who is still missing from the southern part of our project area. So only recently we translocated the first families and we expect them to play a 
important role in reshaping the riparian habitats and increasing the biodiversity in these areas. We also intensively monitor this whole rewilding process using more innovative techniques such as environmental DNA, um, a work that is also generously funded by Nick and Elena. In the past years, we have also been contributing to a modern science-based wildlife monitoring, especially on large carnivores. And for the first time in Romania, we could obtain sound population estimates for wolves, brown bears, and lynx using DNA analysis and camera traps. But to really get to our ultimate goal of creating a large national park, we will need the support of the local communities. It is the locals that need to really benefit in the long run from the richness of the mountains. Which means we need to transform the local economy from an extractive to a conservation oriented model. So within our foundation, we have set up a so-called conservation enterprise program through which we have initiated the first um, wildlife heights, the first ecotourism offers. We have also launched a food hub through which local producers can now access the market. We've um, established a biodiversity farm. We also assist local entrepreneurs um, around the Fagaras Mountains with their business plans and consultancy for their green businesses. And we are currently also developing partnerships with banks for green credit lines to make this transfer easier and to fuel this real change. One of the biggest lessons learned in the past few years, and it became especially clear during the pandemic, is that being a landowner in a community comes also with the responsibility for the people that live there. So in the last few years, we have initiated several social programs in those communes where we are active. We have started um, a food program for elderly people. We set up health stations. We started online teaching uh, for disadvantaged children. And we usually do that in partnership with the town halls and with other NGOs, simply to multiply the effect. We also built an environmental field education center, which we launched last year, where we run special programs for schools from the wider Fagarash area, which are highly popular. But our initiative doesn't stop on a local level. When Russia invaded Ukraine, we managed together with the Frankfurt Zoological Society to provide very quick support with convoys of food and equipment to the protected areas of the Ukrainian Carpathians, which all of a sudden became shelters for thousands of misplaced people. And this was only possible because we could reach out to our network of donors and partners that really cared for both for nature and for people. And I have to say the response was really overwhelming and it is still going on. So to me, the events of the past two years with the pandemic and the war have made it clearer than ever that our own health and our own well-being is closely linked to a healthy nature. So it is a real great pleasure and a source of hope for me to see all these initiatives tonight. You're often asked about how to get involved and there are certainly many ways to do that. Um, first of all, come and visit this beautiful country, the Romanian Carpathians, and its amazing cultural and natural treasures. You can always sign up on our website to receive field reports and stay informed. And for those that would like to get involved more deeply, please get in touch. We are happy to discuss individual partnership programs. Thank you and enjoy your evening. <laughs>